Okay, so for the um, Franco dictatorship discussion, I particularly enjoyed reading the regime that calls itself Christian. Um, personally, I've grown up with the um, influence of Christian um, schools all the way from primary to high school. So pretty much any Christian influence, I'm like, I like looking at it, reading it, and analyzing it. So, um, Father Escare, I think that's how you pronounce it. But, um, he's pretty much arguing that, um, the present state of Spain, which is in 1963, I think, when this takes place, is no longer a Christian nation and that it's because of the Franco regime. And um, whenever it says in paragraph three that he's actually the first in the Spanish hierarchy and possibly the only one to pretty much say or point out that um, the Franco regime is contradicting itself and saying that it is a Catholic nation, even though um, you know, the claims and everything, but he says that it's not. So, in his first, um, dialogue paragraph, he criticizes the state of the nation, and he's pretty much saying that, um, you know, Spain is no longer a unified people, but actually a victors versus, versus the, um, conquered. So, everyone who's who was on the victor's side is benefiting from this, but those who are conquered have, are not benefiting. And he says that this actually, um, violates a papal, um, I guess, decree. And because he's outright violating this, it is a violation of Catholicism and Christianity, which I thought that was actually pretty interesting. Um, what's next? Okay, in his second dialogue paragraph, he um, also says that uh, the Franco regime is still holding prisoners of war, um, although, you know, it's been years after it's happened, because um, those prisoners of war fought for the ideas that the Catholic Church fought for. Yet, after the war, they're still in prison, and because of this, it is again a violation of Catholicism and Christianity. In his third um, dialogue paragraph, he says that Franco is in the wrong again because of his suppression of Catalan culture. And this I thought was interesting because he had pretty much outlawed the Catalans from being able to speak Catalonian. And he argues that this, again, is in violation of another papal um, decree or paper. I, I don't... something like that. And um, by... he says that by suppressing a language, it suppresses a culture. And by suppressing a culture, you suppress a religion. It just goes away. And he says that there's evidence of this in other places. And I totally agree with that. Um, Especially with imperialistic um, tendencies, I guess. Whenever you imperialize another um, country, you the best way for them to conform is you take away their language. By taking away the language, you strip them of their culture. And when you no longer have a culture your religion will slowly fade away, and then you conform to your um, imperialist country. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And in his last dialogue paragraph, he states that um, Catalans aren't necessarily separatists like the Franco regime makes them out to be. Instead, they are a subsection of Spain, and because they are a subsection of Spain, they have rights to their culture, their language, and they should be able to freely express these. Um, I see that kind of as like how states in the U.S. have 
kind of their own culture. Like Texas obviously has a different culture than New York does. So I thought that was a pretty good argument. Um, and then he closes his whole um, interview, I guess, by saying that although the standard of living in Spain has gotten better, um, everything else has not. And because of these social injustices and problems, um, they have become such a focal point for the people that by ignoring them, the Franco regime is again creating this non-Christian state and that it's becoming a problem. So I thought that was really interesting and very easy read and it's very um, insightful. I, I really enjoyed reading that and learning what I was able to learn from it.